civil group inaugural episode real estate and ramblings at tsg live studios podcast episode one the three p's prep photos price hi everyone welcome to the civil group's inaugural podcast my name is jennifer ranella and i'm michael civil we are luxury realtors in the greater philadelphia area we've both been licensed for over 22 years and business partners for an excruciating six god help me we manage, along with our partner, Mark Malfera, 20 agents, all of whom you will get to know throughout this podcast. We love what we do, and we thought a podcast would be a great way to share what we do and how we do it with all of you. And we apologize in advance for the ramblings that come along with it all. So let's start with our intro music. Every new podcast, we will be changing up our intro music. Woohoo! Michael fancies himself. Well, we all know he fancies himself, Easy. but he also fancies himself a music aficionado. So each episode will be begin with a different song. Civil, why don't you tell us why you chose the first song for um, the inaugural episode? American Band by Grand Funk Railroad. Yeah. So I chose that because, um, well, one, you wanted me to choose a song to open the first podcast. And... Um, <clears throat> Like so often, songs pop in my head here and there. Um, American Band pops in my head. And I've always thought there was this one lyric, we're, we're coming to your house, we're going to party it down, we're an American band. Um, but I guess that's just the lyric I made up um, because it's not really in the song. Uh, so it's your made up version. It's my made up version. It's kind of like, you know, a baseball player who's on deck walking up to home plate it's their walk-up music so like i have different songs i guess that you can say are like my walk in music in your head we should clarify in well, your head yeah, in my head but but sometimes i i make you suffer through driving up with the music certain playing. songs right uh, yeah, uh, more than certain times i mean your theme song for one we use that often which we will get to much later much later much later i don't know maybe i'm gonna open up podcast number two with jen's theme song what do you guys think anyway we stay on focus okay we on focus the here three P's, your inaugural song finish up so inaugural song was you know we're coming to your house we're gonna party down we're gonna go over the three p's people so we go on our listing appointments and the first thing that sellers want to know, of course, we fairly crossed the threshold of their house and they want to know how much their house is worth and what do we think of it. You know, right there on the spot, right? When you walk Literally in the like cross the threshold barely in the foyer. And, you know, we always have to say, well, you know, we need to go upstairs and look around and uh, see the house first before we can give you anything more than I'm that. I'm not going to hold you to it. Yeah, just Can give me a just ballpark. Tell me what ballpark. Ballpark, is? right off the top of your heads. Nine times out of ten, that definitely doesn't work either. Um, but what's equally important as the price or the value of the property is preparing the house for sale. So part of our three P's, and I think one of the most important is prep, and the prep of the house directly correlates. Boom. With the Photos. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one of Jennifer's favorite words, correlate. You will hear that throughout the podcast and every time that you do drink. we I was trying not to and I got backed right into that one. Mm -hmm. The real estate industry has changed very rapidly over the years and the consumer has a lot more information at their fingertips, as we all know. As a result, everybody, quote unquote, window shops initially when looking at a property. So they are looking at the photos online and they are seeing the property. So that's why the prep of the property really works right into what the photos are and when people are window shopping, how that relates to that. First impressions, as we all know, are, are everything. When we're in the listing, we, cre we typically, right, Michael, create a honey-do list for these sure sellers. This is part do. of our prep process. Honey-do. Yeah. And what do we normally put on that? So we typically break it down into three categories. We have the A, which are the must-dos. The B, please, could you get to it? And the C, for all our overachievers, these would be fantastic if you could do this as well. And let me tell you, in the 
luxury real estate market, we have uh, a lot of overachievers. We do, but I would also say in all of our markets, I mean, when we give our honeydew <clears throat> honey list, a lot of our clients knock it all out. I mean, they're, they're in, in it with us to get the highest price for their home. A lot of times this means neutralizing the property a little bit. It means painting it. It usually means um, decluttering. Fine, decluttering, fine tuning the exterior, cleaning up, spring clean up, all clean up, mulching, those kind of things depending. A lot of realtors focus on removing personal things. Why? And, and Michael and I do not believe in that. I we mean, do, some. We, like, we believe if the refrigerator is covered yeah. in photos, like, from the day your child was born to now they're 16 or 25 might, yeah might take the might take them down but you know um the removal of all those family photos and stuff i think is overkill like people are potentially you know going to live in this house with their family or families are looking at it you kind of want to have that like family vibe yeah and you want to show that it's a warm home and we do feel like depersonalizing too much does create a cold, cold feel to cold. the house very cold most of the depersonalizing or decluttering is done in an effort to think about how the photos will look online so to michael's point having a fridge full of photos is just not going to relate when it's ta a picture is taken well you don't want buyers getting lost in all your stuff either so like you know purging and having it pulled together is not just for the photos but for prepping for showing the home to the market you want the buyers to come in and you know not see your stuff but think about where their stuff's going to go and we don't want them distracted when looking at the photos online with the stuff that's it can be distracting and it can create for not as nice of an aesthetic from a photo standpoint another one of your favorite words aesthetic correlate and ladies and gentlemen there will be one more of this podcast i guarantee it i won't bore anybody with the vulgar and not so nice words that are your favorite words um, they may hear them during the podcast if they're let's lucky hope not besides the prep of the house the vote and the besides the prep of the house the photos are the next important piece obviously we use professional photos and professional video. And let me tell you, you can tell when an agent has gone through the house with their iPhone to take pictures. Now, or Android. Or, I'm sorry. You know, excuse me. For those Android. of you out there li of living in the green us. bubble shame. Us. Those of us out there. Those of you. Yes. Either oh, yes, way, you. me. I, I you. fully admit it. Yep. Who are you? Another song. Who, who? Anyway, it's very, very obvious. Even though these phones now take some very, very good photos, amazing. It is not. It is easy to tell whether someone has done that or not, and it just does not do justice for the house. Also, in taking these photos, you really want to be cognizant of the amount of photos you're using and what those photos are showing. Not every angle is the best angle of the house. A lot of times, too our favorites especially michael Silva's, but both of ours is when you have to take a picture of the bathroom and really all we're seeing online is a picture of a toilet a toilet and, and just set the, the seats up. The seat up what do you think of people put your seat down or do we really need a picture of that bathroom if it's just a picture of the toilet no because it's a tight bathroom then and all we're seeing is a commode why am i gonna why am i gonna put that out there we just don't even need that picture in the the realm of the pictures i mean maybe there are people that would really think like oh i'm gonna spend a lot of time on that commode it looks like a really nice commode i like that commode i want to go see that house but it doesn't work like no, that doubtful no. doubtful yeah. yeah the other thing when we're shooting bathrooms is we make sure to take up all the um, bath mats because a lot of times that's distracting and, and works against the aesthetic of the photos. Yeah, I mean you might want to see that nice tile floor, the herringbone that someone picked out. It just breaks it up. It just doesn't do it justice usually. There are uh, some other pet peeves that we have. Right? My favorite is the dirty oh, dish rack Melissa. on the $10,000 wool stove in the $3 million house. Oh yeah, Melissa. <laughs> Thank so you. The peanut gallery here is Melissa Click, our marketing director who definitely has pet peeves when it comes to the photos. 
Um, Melissa will be in here from time to time and will definitely make sure to give us her opinion as she always does. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. While and we're doing introductions, Michael. Yep. Our engineer and technologist, Jason Williams. Williams, Williams. How's it going, everybody? Jason is our sound engineer and podcast, uh, all-knowing podcaster, I guess, because he's working on getting this out there to all of you guys. So you can just blame Jason if you're having to listen to this. Right, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Send your, send your complaints to jason.williams at foxroach.com. Oh, my uh. goodness. <laughs> As we bring it back to, and you're going to see that this is going to be probably my job most of the time, as we bring it back to topic, um, we, Where were, are we? we were in photos, Michael. So, photos. So not every picture is a picture to use in the nope. house. So when you're taking these photos, you may have 100 photos that you've taken to the house, especially if you have a professional photographer, but there is no need to use all of 100. No. Every house has certain angles that are better angles. Every house has a good side and a bad side, and we want to convey the good side online when people are window yeah, shopping. We, we don't want people to rule out the house from their pad or phone or, God forbid, their Android. And, you know, look at all these photos, overanalyze, and, and not want to come see it. Well, the other way our industry has changed a little bit is because the consumers have so much information at their fingertips, we definitely find that these buyers will overanalyze and overanalyze the house. And the more photos that are on there, the more they will overanalyze it. They will try and guess what angle is what and what's where. And then they take that to a whole nother level where they're Ooh. overanalyzing the satellite photos that they're finding online overanalyze the previous well, listing because that's out there. Let's not talk poorly about all our buyers, Dan. You're kind of making them sound a little cuckoo. No, but buyers, for the most part, if a house sits out there, especially coming soon, a lot of times that they will overanalyze the property. Definitely coming soon. So and, what, and what that could be a podcast there. So what do you do with the coming soon? The coming soons, we feel, should only be out there for two to three days max because we're finding these buyers, because they're not allowed in the property, overanalyze the property uh, from the outside. It. They pretty much stock it, don't they, Michael? And they'll, they'll drive by, they'll drive by at different hours. They'll even sit outside the house and just watch. Yep. Like the watcher. They do. And we find that a lot of times we can lose the audience or lose the momentum if we're on coming soon too long. So 21 days coming soon and bright. Just because it's there doesn't mean you have to use all 21 days. It's kind of like if you take 150 photos, you don't have to use 150 photos. No, and we find that the bot we can lose those buyers by losing their attention because they have overanalyzed it for too long. Let's get them to the momentum. Let's get them to the house. Right. Feel, touch, get them to the house. So our next P is price. Price is... Price is obviously the most important, um, and a lot of what we've done to prepare them and put the photos out there, the price then is dictated by all of that. When discussing price right now, we are coming off of one of the most lucrative seller's markets we've seen pretty much in our career. Thus, when pricing a house, in traditional times, we would use six to eight months of comparable sales, sold properties, depending on the property, very the unique property, depending, depending on, on the market. market. We are finding yep. in this current market that we are looking at six to eight months, and then we're looking at a year to two years back and coming up with what we think the value, although not on exact science, we take into consideration the past two years and not just the craziness that was this spring with the low supply well, last, and high demand. It was really the last year. What was it, June? 2021 was probably like the peak craziness and then you know this spring was pretty crazy it was pretty crazy but i don't think we saw like the total insanity that we saw that june it started to wane just a little and get a little more normal so when you set a price you're setting an expectation walking in the door and you as a seller we want that house to exceed buyer's expectation walking in the door. We don't want to fall short of expectations. So when walking in that door with a price in their mind, and don't forget they're also looking at other houses that are priced similarly, 
that sets an expectation walking in the door. But Zillow says my house is worth a million dollars. They're yeah. crazy. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> totally crazy. Cuckoo. A way of explaining setting expectations. Uh, Michael and I were just previewing a $3 million property probably about a week or two ago. And similarly to setting an expectation of price oh. and how price dictates a buyer's mindset walking in the door, so too do the attributes that are outlined on the multiple listing service or MLS as you're going to hear us uh talk about bright, bright MLS. MLS is all multiple listing service. So we were previewing a house and we were walking in. We had a relocation buyer that needed a five bedroom home. And we were walking in that front door and walking around and Michael more than me, but was really fixated on finding that fifth I bedroom. I could not for life of me find the fifth bedroom. I mean, I, I thought maybe there was a hidden door to a third floor, which would be stupid. It's new construction. Why would you do that? I thought perhaps maybe it was over the garage, so went to the mudroom, I'm looking around, I'm looking all over the house, probably for 20 minutes to try and find this fifth bedroom. And then grab the MLS sheet that was on the kitchen counter, which that said 5,200 square feet, and the brochure said 6,000 square feet. But let's get back to where we're going here with the bedrooms and I or turn, setting expectations which well, is what we're and then it turns out about. that the fifth bedroom was in the basement but was it though well we went back down the basement because we had already been in the basement right yes basement was a big vanilla box wine wine closet full bath and a gym right Gym with a rubber floor. Mirrors. And a wall of glass. And two little carriage house windows. Port side windows. Port side, excuse me. You like to refer to them as port side. Yes. They're carriage house windows, but okay. But I guess th I guess that was the, um, I'm guessing that was the fifth bedroom. Because I s didn't find the fifth bedroom anywhere. It didn't have a closet. No closet. It also had a door to the exterior. Do you sleep on the treadmill? I think the rubber floor. Granny. Yeah, put Grandma on yeah. the rubber floor. Hey, Granny, don't worry. I'll be down to do my Peloton at 5.30 in the morning. Well, that's what we needed the fifth bedroom for. And a lot of buyers nowadays, because we saw a big move to that from the pandemic, of a lot of cohabitate. Multi-generational multi living. Multi-generational living. Grandma and Grandpa are coming in for the whole summer now. You know, Or they're actually buying a house nearby because they want to be that close to their grandkids that they only saw over the holidays. It's happening quite a bit. So bringing up setting expectations brings us to our next P. And well, I know we started this with prep photos. Three P's. Price, the three P's. But the more we dug into this and started talking about pricing and setting expectations, walking in the front door and how important that was, we came up with a silent P that we think belongs in this conversation. It's more of a service announcement to our Public fellow service announcement and to our fellow listing agents, right, Michael? Yes, it is, and that P is for puffery. What is puffery? Well, you all—I th thought you made it up. Yeah, you guys thought I made up one of puffering. One of many rando. Things that Michael Civil isms that you make up throughout the day. Correct. Uh, yes, no. Melissa and I thought puffery was made up. Nope, but it is. But it is. No, we, it is legit. Ha our handy dandy Google told us that actually he wasn't full of shit. That it was a word. And what does it mean, Michael? So the definition of definition of puffing in real estate, also known as puffering, is an exaggeration of fact bordering on falsehood. And in certain circumstances, can be bordering on criminal or illegal. Um, Ignac, you know, exaggerations are one thing. Um, exaggeration of material facts is some, something else entirely. So, you know, if you're going to go about calling, you know, the non fifth bedroom in the basement the fifth bedroom, that's a perfect example of. Puffing, puffery. And, you know, if you're going to include the subterranean finished square foot in the gross living area, 
Or the garage square foot in the gross living or area. The How garage. many times do we see that? Pump, pump, pump it up. Like, why are you doing that? Another song. I mean, I'll just drop them in here yeah, and there. All Sorry. the time. Sorry. It's like a daily occurrence. It's just how it works. It's unfortunate. It's just how it works, but gotta love it. So anyway. But but all of this sets a buyer's expectation. Walking in the door, the square footage, the bedroom count, the full bathroom count, what's down in the basement, what's how, above level, how, how many bedrooms are on the second floor. All these things set expectations so Jennifer, just like price ex- sets expectations. Right? So Jennifer, our Relo. Relocation buyers, which we will he will call yep, Relo. They specifically had us go look at this house. Correct. How disappointed were they when we told them that this house that they loved and they were thinking of flying in to come see? That they were overanalyzing online. Totally overanalyzing. Didn't have a fifth bedroom. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Pretty disappointed. We're, well, and especially with our low current low inventory. So what has happened is it's been totally written off and they don't even want to come see it. Nope. Which is what happens with these properties. Therefore, bye, bye. increasing your seller's days on market therefore decreasing the um, Price. probability that you're going to get the number that you think you're going to get for that property. Yeah. So all of this prep, photos, price, and puffery the really play thing. on the final outcome. They are. They're all equally important and integral to the sell, successful sale, I should say, of the property. So that it concludes our inaugural podcast episode of Real Estate and Ramblings at TSG Live Studios. If you have any questions about anything you've heard on this podcast or any real estate questions in general, or really any rambling questions, and obviously if you've learned today, any music questions, We are happy to address any of them. Feel free to DM us at The Civil Group on Instagram, and we will address any questions anybody has on our next podcast. Thank you again for listening, and stay tuned for more ramblings from The Civil Group.